Hey, my name is Burns Blackwell. I was diagnosed with CGD when I was uh, two years old after uh, multiple um, infections and I had, uh, couldn't hold anything down from, my, um, from eating, so they uh, sent off uh, some labs to, after some uh, exploratory surgery, they sent off labs to a lot of different hospitals and actually UNC Hospital was um, diagnosed me and referred me to Dr. Buckley at age two. Um, I'm 37 years old now. Um, when I was 35, I was I had a bone marrow transplant, a successful bone marrow transplant. So technically now, I guess I don't have CGD, but I'll always live with CGD as part of me. Uh, I don't let it define me, but it's part of me. Um, so, so part of my story is, you know, two years old, all the way, um, you know, had multiple infections back then. Um, diagnosed with CGD, it was, it was extremely scary. Well, I mean, it is scary today too, but uh, extremely scary. It was 1979, um, and Dr. Buckley was basically um, an angel for us. Um, she, we we lived an hour away from her and uh, frequented Duke Hospital growing up. Um, multiple hospital visits. The longest one was probably seven weeks. Multiple short hospital visits. Um, so we, we drive an hour to Duke on Thursdays was her clinic day and they do labs and ask me how I'm feeling and, and um, just constantly battling illnesses. Um, I did have some fungal infections, did have um, bacterial infections, things of that nature, but I'd probably have to go to say that 70% of my illnesses, when I say illnesses, when I have a fever and things of that nature, came, um, um, they never got diagnosed, just they what I call threw the book at me, just threw a lot of medicines at me, and um, eventually I got better. So um, part of growing up was was Duke, but um, we didn't let it define us. Um, I still played soccer, I played tennis, I played golf, I played basketball, uh, I went to school. Um, some of my friends didn't even know what I the the illness I had. I didn't, you know, especially in college. I think actually only about very few of my friends knew. Uh, when I got sick, I'd just kind of disappear for a week and then appear back and, and, and be better. So, um, so um, but I guess part of the things that, I, a few of the things that I learned growing up with CGD was to voice, voice when you don't feel well. Um, you know, you know your body better than anyone else. And um, we've, I've always had a great relationship with Dr. Buckley and she, we've been able to talk she asks me questions, I tell her how I feel, and within her knowledge and in my knowledge of my body, we usually can figure out a solution and, and move forward. So we stay calm, we, uh, we always packed a bag whenever we went to see Dr. Buckley, had it in the trunk, just in case she said, you know, growing up, she said, okay, I think we need to put you in the hospital for a few days. If you didn't have a bag, you always got checked in. If you did have a bag, if you were prepared, and, and then you got to go home. So that was always one of our little tricks. Um, but, um, you know, a few scary infections, fungal infections, they were always the big ones for me. Um, but, you know, you just, you, just, you just do what you can, stay positive. Um, uh, we, we, one, of the big, um, one of the bigger infections I've had was we thought I had a fungal infection in 2010. Um, so they put me, I was on posiconazole, and they put me on um, um, Ambizone every day, which is amphoterable, which amphotericin, uh, I call it amphoterable. Um, so I had daily treatments of that for six months, actually, um, and then towards the end of the six months, they discovered that it wasn't even a fungal infection. Dr. Buckley was at a conference for, at NIH, and they talked about this um, back this germ that was presenting itself as a fungal infection via um, you know scans, all these other you know blood blood tests, everything it looked exactly like a fungal infection. It was actually some very unique germ, and um, so they started me on an antibiotic, and within four days I had improved. Um, one of the fun things about that um, six month pro process of, of daily treatment in the hospital for Amazon. I, I wasn't outpatient. I was not, I was, I was not inpatient. Was, I got married during that time. So that was pretty special. Um, Dr. Buckley came to the wedding. Um, you know, they, they gave me 
uh, the day off of the treatment to, to actually get married. All my friends and family were there. My wife, you know, it was just a, it was just a wonderful experience. Um, um, now, if I had to do it over again, I would have preferred to be healthy, but um, we we still made the best of it. Um, so we we didn't let it slow us down. Um, so um, after that scary illness in 2010, and then all the all the all the scary ones I had growing up, um, I got better. And in 2011, um, Dr. Buckley came to me. We were it was around Thanksgiving, and she said, "What do you think about a bone marrow transplant?" And I just you know, I've always trusted her, and I've did. You know, she talked to me a little bit about it, and I said, "Why? By all means, let's let's investigate." So my brother was tested, and um, we were very lucky. He was a he was a perfect match. I think she told me there was a 10 to 20 percent chance that he could be a perfect match, and and he was. So um, and of course, he does not have CGD. So we were thrilled. Um, so we progressed pretty quick. Um, and you know the insurance issue is definitely a, definitely a, a problem there. But we worked through the insurance issue. We got lucky and, it got, and got it approved. And then in January um, we dove head first. Um, first transplant did not successfully graft, so it, so it technically didn't work. Um, but we kept our heads up. Uh, we stayed positive, um, and we took a we took a few weeks break, and then tried the second transplant again. We were lucky again to have my brother as a donor, so we just he came back up and went through the went through the process, and um, and we started transplant number two. Um, so transplant number two went along, and um, and um, it appeared to work, but my uh, white blood cell count was still very very low, um, so they weren't really sure what was going on. So that illness I talked to you about in 2010. It was in my spleen, and um, so in 2010, I mean, I mean um, so in 2012, my spleen was just very, very enlarged. I said it was the size of a football. Um, so while I did have a white blood count of like 0 0.6, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, somewhere around there, a um, platelet count of around 40, they still decided to go in and uh, take my spleen out. So they took my spleen out, um, and the, by the time I had woken up, my white blood count was back up to two. So it was a miracle. Um, the spleen was out. The second bone marrow transplant worked. Um, and I now, if you if you do the, the respiratory burst study, which is the study that uh, tells you if you have CG or not, I now pass. So um, I passed the respiratory burst study, so I'm technically cured. It's still a process to recover from a, from a bone marrow transplant. My, T cell function is still low, but hey, that's a lot better than, than having CGD. So um, it took it took work, it took um, positive attitude, it took um, staying you know focused on 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 getting well after the transplant. But it can happen. Um, I'm now living CGD free. I'm only on two medicines, and we're talking about dropping those two medicines besides the thyroid medicine, which is probably going to, my whole family has thyroid issues, so it's, it's probably nothing to do with CGD or transplant, but I'm doing, doing very, very well. Um, it's actually my first IDF conference, so I um, should have been here 15 years ago, but um, I'm here today I'm, uh, trying to share my story, um, say that you know, positive things can happen, keep your, you know, keep your spirits up. Don't let it define you, but yet, um, yet it is part of you. So uh, that's my story.